So hi and welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk Travel. I'm um, coming to you from sunny Sydney, my old hometown, and I'm sitting in the SiteMinders offices with SiteMinders founder, Mike Ford. Mike, thanks for joining us. It's great to have no you worries. on the show. No worries. Good to have you here. Thank you. I've seen you a bit around, yeah. so it's good to have you in the office finally. Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. It's great to meet you. So, so Mike, let's get started. I'd like to try to, um, as I do with all videos, start with a little bit of a background. Um, yep. You started SiteMinder 10 years ago. Yeah, 12 years 12 now. 12 years ago now, yeah, it's sorry. going quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so let's yeah. start, what was your, um, what was it that you were doing prior to SiteMinder? And then what was your motivation to actually go, hey, you know what? I want to fill that void. I want to fill that gap. Yeah, it was actually quite, a, quite an interesting um, turn of events, really. So I was leading a delivery team. Uh, we were developing, um, you know, a conversion of uh, paper-based claims in the health industry to electronic claims between hospitals and medical funds. Okay. So if you sort of draw a parallel to our property management systems within the travel industry to channels, it was very much the same thing, right? Because you're converting, really, you're converting data formats like a switch between one format in the PMS or patient management system to another format in the fund. So I was running a, a team that actually was building this technology so that the claims could be instantaneous rather than sort of waiting for them to go in the post and get remitted. And so we were trying to transform um, the health industry in, in, in that sense. Um, but at the same time, I had a side venture in a, um, in a hostel, a sort of 250-bed hostel up on the northern beaches um, as just a, a sort of side investment. And, um, and through that, I learned um, you know, a, a bit about the industry and about the proliferation of these last-minute sites, right? So at that time, it was what if and lastminute.com and rate gain and, you know, you name it, there was a last-minute site for it. Um, so I could actually map the business problem onto the, onto the hospitality industry. Um, so what I did is I, I sort of um, had, had a bit of a disagreement uh, with our CEO at that, at that company about um, you know, how to really get traction within um, the relationship side of the, the patient management systems and sharing revenue with them and integrating well to them. And mm -hmm. So it was highly manual. So um, because of that, I thought, well, let me apply the same, the, the same view to the you know, hotel industry, but the way I want to do it and the way right. I think it should be done. And so I, I left there, consulted back to them a couple of days a week, and then um, a very talented um, tech architect who was working for me at the time at that company um, is today our CTO and my co-founder. Mm -hmm. So I sort of dragged him along with me, mm -hmm. and we built, um, we built the same sort of solution for nice. the hotel industry. Nice, nice. So yeah. when you originally built the solution, was it primarily a channel manager product, or were there... Because you have a range of products now. You've got a booking engine, you've got a website builder, you've even got a small PMS. So the original product was a channel manager and a booking engine, fair to say? Actually, it was a channel manager very much. Right, right. Um, the inception was uh, really about, look, at the time, it was, you know, the whole business solution didn't have a view to where we are today. It, it was really about these hotels are struggling to get exposure because really every single time a rate changes or a reservation comes through, somebody's logging in. And the more sites you're on, the more logins you, you've got to do. And the exposure to overbookings is, is therefore exacerbated by every additional channel. So mm -hmm. you're risking overbookings. I mean, imagine leaving all that inventory out overnight and bookings are happening and nothing's adjusting. Yeah. And you could have a you know, hundred overbookings. Yeah. So really what we did is we, we differed slightly from the solutions at that time. The solutions that were on the market at that time were just basically a window onto each site, but you could manage it from one place. What we did differently was we allowed the, as soon as a reservation came in from any channel, we automatically adjusted every other channel. So we, we really built a, a reservation engine that could tear the reservations apart and then adjust everything. Now, a lot of solutions these days have sort of followed that, but at that time it was quite different. And that really helped us to sort of gain an edge over some of our competitors. That and our, our sort of attention to sort of customer service and that sort of thing. So um, very much channel management, but we soon realized that direct bookings and the, the, the hotel's direct channel was equally important, right, to the, very important to the channel. And so we looked at all the booking engines, try to integrate the ones in the market at the time, try to strike up relationships as channels on our channel manager. And today we have many booking engines that connect to our channel manager. But in the early days, um, when we weren't sort of in the overseas markets, we looked around this market for great booking engines and there just weren't many. And so we thought to ourselves, well, we'll integrate towards there, but really these guys need something more and it needs to work uh, you know, better with our, our distribution system. And so 
we integrated to the ones we thought were good. A lot of them just didn't have integration capability, so we, we built our own. Yeah. So that was about two years later. We, we built our own um, our booking engine and started to service the direct channel. And yeah, and, and then we've, we've added additional product over the years to, um, to focus on a broader holistic distribution as opposed to um, you know, just third party channels. Yeah, right. Yeah. So if, if someone who had zero idea about our industry or site miner or the types of services that you offer, yeah. how would you describe it to the layman in terms of what you do? So to the layman, basically, if you think about it, hoteliers are concerned with two, two major things at a very high level, right? One is getting guests into your hotel and bringing them back again. And the other one is looking after them when they're there. So really there's those two worlds and we're the world of bringing those hotels, bring sorry, bringing those guests to your hotel. Yeah. Um, obviously the benefit for us and the, the, the value we can add hoteliers is that that landscape has got incredibly complex over yeah. the last few years. Uh, whereas before, you know, it was, well, you know, I'm in the magazine, I'm in the tour brochure and I've got the, the sign on the side of the highway and that's me. Yeah. Uh, and that, and that's really just changed. It's a very very complex landscape, and it's very it's shifting a hell of a lot. So, so for us, um, you know, there's, there's a we we could just focus on that one part of the hotel's world, and that's enough for us. We don't really sure. get into the uh, in stay yeah. kind of yeah. technology piece. Let's talk a little about that shifting landscape because it has, especially in the last five to seven years, dramatically changed in many ways. Yeah. How yeah. or what were some of the cha challenges for you as a company as you scaled? Yeah. Uh, to over 30,000 hotels now over yep. 12 years. Yep. What were some of the biggest challenges that you faced as a company that you found you had to really work through? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the turning point for us when we decided that our ambitions were beyond Australia, so we had done very well and cemented our, our place in the Australian landscape quite early. And I think the real challenges came when we decided to to sort of yeah, go further afield and that, that, that wasn't enough for us. We really want to take this thing global and, and be a force globally. So we started to try to um, you know, contact uh, hotels from here to, to, to test the market in the UK, which we believed was, was a similar market. You know, Lastminute.com was over there, et cetera. Um, so the, the, you know, we just realized pretty soon that you can, you can have those conversations, mm -hmm. but it's just there's, there's too much heavy lifting, too many communication breaks to actually make it as um, effective as a go to market that we had in Australia, where, you know, it was a machine of, um, you know, we really understood how to talk to hoteliers, um, how to have those conversations, how to contact them in the right way. And, you know, it was important for us to, to replicate that. So we decided to to localize, be local in the markets that we wanted to chase. So that took a, a really big investment to say, well, if we want to go fast and we want to actually be local to the hoteliers and serve them the way they want to be served in their in their location, you've got you've got a big investment to make. And so that's when we took additional capital on. And um, that was primarily what we took it on for at product development and then accelerating our operational centers so we can have salespeople there, but service people as well, account managers where the hotels are, yeah. or at least in proximity. Yeah. Um, so that was our decision. We were really committed to that service level in the, in the country and localizing like all of our back ends that the hoteliers interface with now are all localized into um, the various languages. So if you're a French hotelier and you log into the back end of SiteMinder, it's all the whole thing is in French, right? Yeah. So. That takes a lot of effort. You've got to um, you've got to localize for tax, for service charges in Asia is a big thing. It works in a different way. Uh, so there's just so much in terms of localization and really being truly local in in those big markets that we wanted to chase. So that was a big hurdle and uh, and tough, mm -hmm. and but we did it. Um, and then I think also you know as you're scaling your um, you know your leadership and your management and etc you sort of the company's really growing you've got to make sure those people are growing with it or that you're identifying early when you're missing talent right because sometimes by the time you realize it's needed it's it's, it's a bit too late and so yeah. the internal challenges were about making sure you've got the right talent in the right places before you desperately need it and yeah. um so there's always the, the normal growing pains of a, a software as a service company yeah. that um but you know there were the luckily we started off on the cloud and there was no major technology shifts like that we've we've taken the pain of re-architecting um our system several times because you know we we knew we had to scale to really, really large sizes. And sometimes it's very tempting just to roll out features and features and features. But, you know, we've been very disciplined about ensuring the scalability, security of the system, that sort of thing. So sometimes you bear that pain of saying, well, we've got to actually focus on scalability because we're going, 
um, this thing's growing. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's some big challenges. I mean, I could probably talk all day about them, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you know, those are some of the things that come to mind. Definitely, great. Yeah. Also, let's. I'd like to maybe just talk a little bit about this. Um, there's a topic that does, doesn't seem to go away in our, in our space, and that is how hotels are struggling to recognize the difference between either OTA uh, having either direct reservations through their own booking engines or going through OTAs and third party channels. Um, rather than focusing on perhaps the experience, getting the guest into the building, developing the experience, creating the memories, that type of thing. Do you, do you think that this is still something that um, hoteliers are really struggling with and is there a way that companies like SiteMinder or other types of or similar types of products can can help the hotelier try to understand that it's it's about a mix it's it's a balance yeah. rather than trying to focus purely on direct uh, yeah absolutely direct reservations look i think it's been that kind of rhetoric i guess has been blown up in, in the media a lot i think it's it's sensationalist but i think the reality is you know otas do they, they, they're successful for a very good reason, which is they provide an incredible service to the consumer. And really, if you think about this, it's not really about you know what the hotel thinks about the OTA. It's really about how does the hotel engage with their guest mm -hmm. and find their guest. And so I think um, you know OTAs are there to provide the consumer, the guest, a service, and so they've got a relationship with the guest. And so really, that's that's an important relationship for hotels to recognise. Um, and then I think. You know, a lot of it's within the control of the hotel. So you'll find if, if people are saying that, have they really, you know, that, that hey, this is not a good thing, but without a, the right mix, have they really sort of critically looked at their own technology? How much have they invested in their own, you know, website booking engine? Is it mobile um, optimized? You know, yeah. like, because you'll go to these, these hotels still and they've got a booking engine, but it, it's very hard to navigate on mobile and 50% of people are booking on mobile in that region. So, yeah. you know, th there's a lot they can do to help themselves. And I think there's no choice but to have a balanced strategy. What you need to do is represent your own shop front and invest in that and, and, and represent your own shop front, take care on it, you know, work on your descriptions, work on your photos, just take care of mm. how you're marketing your property, but use the OTAs as a marketing channel, as driving business and then create a, a relationship with your guest. Um, certain places you're gonna be much more effective in, 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 in locations and types of um, traveler or segments that you attract will be more effective through your own booking engine. Some are gonna be more you know, GDS um, heavy, some will be more OTA heavy. The point is you really need to understand who's staying at your hotel and then tap into the right channels and the right mix and to the extent that you can optimize your, your cost of acquisition, right? So. Yeah. Really, you've just got to pay attention to that. You've got to pay attention to your reputation rates. There's things out. You've got to manage your social channels to make sure that your, you know, your property's in the best light, and then people will come direct. I mean, like personally, I I will look at Booking.com, Expedia, etc. I will. My first choice would be to go to a hotel website to go and really have a look what they say about their own property mm -hmm. so i kind of that's how i personally show everyone shops differently some people will just get onto the the you know ota mobile app do a quick booking if it's, if it's same day stuff so yeah. you can't really predict what the consumer is going to do you've just got to be yeah. you've got to be you there and you've, and, the you've, and you've got a revenue manager and yield accordingly to to control your costs yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and so. just another layer that really now is starting to come into that is uh the in introduction of um google's uh, yeah. book on Google piece that they you know the way and they've just recently expa expanded their reach uh, into other markets now um, yeah. mm -hmm. that's going to be another factor that hotels really do need to consider I think now because ultimately Google wants to keep everybody in their ecosystem and book through their ecosystem rather than going out to the the OTAs or to the hotel direct so yeah uh, it's it's another uh, factor that hoteliers are going to have to consider I think and the sooner well, they, I, they, they do so I mean I, I think they should be embracing it in a, in a big way 100% um, yeah. so like to me if I'm a hotelier and look, I don't run a hotel anymore, but if I'm, a, if I'm putting myself in the hotelier shoes, I am really excited about what Google's doing. Mm. Um, and so it's another, it's another channel for me. I think um, it's also a cost effective channel, I think, and, and Google positions it quite well from that perspective. So if I'm thinking of, if I can get Google, uh, Google bookings, um, they're more direct in the sense that, you know, some, there's a big debate, are they an OTA, they're not. But the reality is the way it works right now is they're still um, handing over 
they, they're making the booking and they charge for that, but they're handing over all the guest details, et cetera. They're very transparent. You own that relationship right from the booking, not from when the person right. checks in. Right. There's a big difference there. Yes. And so I think it's good from, from that perspective and it's good from uh, where Google's positioning the cost to the hotel. So I think um, you know, using companies like SiteMinder or whoever else is, is your tech provider, um, it's now a lot easier to tap into Google, whereas before you were a big hotel who did CPC and you needed people to manage that. CPA model is now, um, you just pay for what you get. And so we're excited about what Google's doing. I think hotels should be. Yeah, I agree. So um, with the industry's technology landscape changing so much, um, there's a lot of new solutions coming into the marketplace, for again, for hoteliers to consider. Yeah. Um, and I think for the larger branded chains, properties, it's much easier for them to embrace that new, newer technology. Things like you know, chatbots, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, robotic solutions, even even um, you know certain AI. How do you um, feel that for smaller hotels? What what do you, in your opinion and with your experience, what's some of the best ways for them to to, to really embrace that and to make sure that that they're on not if not ahead of the curve, but they're with it and then they're not being left behind. Yeah. I think look, I think it's challenging for. Um, it, like, I'm going to take the independent minds, the hotel mindset here, and I think it's challenging for them. A, they're very, very busy with their business, and so you know, it's kind of why we exist. I mean, we really want to sort of automate um, their navigation of that landscape, bring them guests without them spending too much time on being tech experts, right? And they really need to be focusing on their property and their guest experience. So that's kind of what what we aim for, but. The reality of the situation is it's very difficult them being as busy as they are in the independent space, for example, to take a lot of time and have people to do these evaluations and, and that sort of thing. So I think a lot of their education actually comes from people like us uh, beating down their doors and telling them about our products, right? That's just because there is not a lot of um, educational or um, forums out there. If you think about some of the bigger travel tech forums, they're, they're not necessarily that rich in data for the independent hotel. And so it's, it's quite hard if you think about it as an independent hotel. Where do I find our like Google stuff and it's sponsored stuff? And it's like, well, what do I trust? What do I trust? Mm -hmm. So there are, there are certainly, um, you know, certainly research that they can do and trial, you know, trials of, of technology that they can do. But I think I think that the, the, what it may be a more key fundamental issue for independent hotels is they're, they they slow will have tra traditionally been quite slow to adopt and just get the basics right. Like like I, I said to you, if people are still not mobile with their booking engine or their website, um, and maybe they're only on a half of the distribution channels they should be, probably the chatbot thing for them is like another step further away. And, and so a lot of hotels just trying to get online, trying to get the basics right, and that's what they should be focusing on. Um, in terms of the other technology and innovation within the independent space versus, and I hope this answers your question, but you know, innovation in the independent space versus the, the chain space is that I, I sort of, I've seen some really promising new applications sort of coming up um, of late, right? And I see that accelerating. Like there wasn't a hell of a lot to choose from in, in the past. And yeah. I see some really great, useful applications that may or may not appeal to certain segments of hotels. So I think, um, you know, ourselves, there's others out in the in the marketplace that are trying to embrace relationships with these with these applications and trying to support their connectivity to the PMS to enable them yeah. to, you know, to, 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 to sort of flourish. And I think connectivity is a really important thing in our industry in order to promote innovation. So that's the first thing. I think the technology that we haven't seen yet is going to be people having great ideas and building stuff that we don't haven't thought about yet, but it's it, it's going to still be based on basic connectivity to the hotel systems and that sort of thing. So I think fostering innovation takes connectivity. Yeah. Um, and so while the education piece is different, uh, is, is difficult, I think it's incumbent on people like yourself, people like us who are, you know, um, and other companies that are developing um, and merchandising other applications to start to educate um, or to help mm -hmm. do our piece in helping, mm -hmm. you know, educate what's out there. And, and really the job is also to make these things seamlessly work together because mm -hmm. 
it's the friction is, is is an important thing. And I think there's friction in today's market in terms of hotels adopting a new app, but the actual friction is not necessarily trying it out. It's like, well, it's quite difficult to get everything connected. And so it's not as easy to do it as, as you'd want to just quickly try it out. Oh, I like it, I'll, I'll buy it. So you really want to reduce that friction in, in the industry um, through connectivity, through maybe you know single sign-on and merchandising and working together with partners. So, I, I mean, our approach is very open open approach, integrate, see if we can create seamless experiences for hoteliers. That's where I think it's moving and I think that will help foster uh, adoption and awareness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You mentioned applications, um, so things like upselling tools, yeah. revenue management tools, all of these other add-ons yeah. that the hotels can Yeah, have. I mean like there's, yeah. you know, there's your Okies exactly. of the world yeah. who, who are in the upsell side, yeah. there's um, many revenue management systems, you know, you get the big end of ideas, you've got um, right. the more mid-market stuff, right. um, you know, great, great systems out there um, and, and new up-and-comers. So I think um, that's one thing, but there's some very interesting categories we're seeing as well, like transfers, airport transfers, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, somebody's arriving, you know that they're, they get the reservation up from the PMS and they're able to offer you know, something, there might be tours and activities and, you know, things that you can um, merchandise before the stay based on understanding who's staying, when they're staying. Um, and, and so, yes, there's upsell and revenue management, which are your usual suspects, but there's a whole ca other category of applications that we're seeing that we hadn't really envisaged would, would, would actually make right. use of it that are getting good use. So I think, you know, in our own personal context, um, you know, we're trying to build up this, both sides of the equation to, to, to create this um, connectivity, which is tough. It's a chicken and egg thing. Um, but I think over time, the need will drop, whether people are connecting direct into PMSs or using third party connectivity to bond all these systems mm -hmm. together, I think the need is going to be the driver, and the hotels themselves um, will choose the ones that are successfully integrated. And, and um, same for the PMSs, right? They're going to choose the PMSs that have connectivity. And so I think. Um, I think the need, the customer need is going to drive and foster this connectivity. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also very interesting with these new companies coming up with these new applications, marketplaces are starting to spring up as well that support the integration with the PMSs or with other companies yeah. um, so that hotels can easily pick and choose Correct. these services. If that, and maybe get educated need. as part of that. Right, right. right. So. But I think what the key to the success for these marketplaces is going to be the, the, the adoption by the end user ultimately and the pickup rate. Correct. And I think the um, one of the, the key factors that as a, I guess, an industry from a tech side we need to consider is to make that as frictionless as possible. Correct. And, and, I, and I don't think, I've, I haven't seen, I personally, including you know, everybody who, who's working on these things, I think there's a bit of, a bit of time um, before we really get it right. right. And, um, and I think it's going to take commitment from the PMSs and the applications who are both actually the beneficiaries. Mm. Um, it's going to take commitment from them as well, right? Mm. And like I said, whether it's direct from the PMS up, if they want to do the work to connect certain applications or if the applications want to do the work to connect direct and, and not go through an exchange, mm. perfect, that, that works as well. The point is the PMS really wants to be in a position to say, you know, we're giving you choice. Um, here, right, or even a even a, um, a CRS or whoever, we're giving you choice beyond our own app, app mm. stack, right? Because mm. the reality of the matter, like this is my view, no, um, with technology moving as as quickly as it is, th there's going to be no player. I mean, there's a lot of players trying to keep up with every kind of category of tech they offer, and like, oh yeah, we need to offer one of those, 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 those. Without doubt, they're not going to do every single one of those things really well. And hoteliers really deserve to get that, you know, that, that best of breed for, for what they want. And so I think it's about, ultimately for me, the whole thing boils down to choice for the, for the hotel who's the customer of, of these tech companies yeah. and, and PMSs. Yeah, great, great. Okay, um, so let's talk about the future a little bit. Let's say in the next three to five years, how do you see technology evolving in, in our landscape? And, and primar primarily for the independent user. So yep. it, rather than, for, again, because I know the chains, they have the budgets, the resources to really throw at technology, but if the smaller operators, it's they're running everything. So how do you see for them technology really influencing their business in the next three to five years? Well, I, I really think that's awesome. I mean, the awesome thing about technology uh, uh, and, it's, and, and how easy it is, and we're not, don't take it with a pinch of salt. It's not, it's not easy to get it to market and all that. But these days, developing something and bringing it to market is, is quite a bit easier than it would have been you know, a long time ago, and it's cheaper. Um, so, yeah, I think... I think um, 
what we're trying to certainly what we're trying to do and i guess anyone can make the decision if we're doing it well or not but what we're trying to do and others in our space are trying to do is really um allow the hotelier to the independent hotelier to say hey, i've got more power than you've got like you've got teams of people but i've got just as much power uh, within my hotel right and 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 that is top class you know we i mean we produce top class technology around distribution booking engines i think the next phase is going to be not just having these technologies but the intelligence to actually make sure these technologies are proactively doing the right things at the right points in time during the customer journey and with the right segments right so you can have a booking engine and a distribution system they might not talk to each other that well other than sending rates and availability mm. or you might have plug-in bi which says hey you know what your market's actually uh looking pretty dismal this next week do you want me to spin up a couple of promotions and let, let's get some action happening here so i think um I think technology is going to get a lot smarter. The, the fundamentals are, are there. Great technology has been built to help these um, hoteliers get online. But I think the next level is not going to be necessarily how many people and teams of IT people you've got. It's going to be, I'm going to adopt the applications in the market that are, are doing really smart things. And that's um, already, like if you look at revenue management systems tailored for the independent hotel, you know, comprehensive distribution, like our, the, the power of our distribution to an independent hotel is basically... Um, just as powerful as, as, as if we were to offer it to you know a large chain, and that the only difference is scalability, security that we offer the the large chain that may not need to be scaled for the for the small hotel. But fundamentally, their power to reach is is the same. The thing they don't have that a chain has is choice of you know multiple hotels. That's always going to be the, the yeah. case, right? They're always going to have. But I think things like loyalty. Um, you know, which m might be today really um, specific to bigger hotels, but ways to create those sorts of programs for independent ho hotels, revenue management being more automated, smarter, booking engines and distribution being much more ho holistically in integrated to to do smarter smarter things. So I think I think the independent hotelier can can really look forward to having um, equivalent technology power to. Um, to the large chains. In fact, in some cases, more nimble because some of the large chains have to do a whole lot of programs around CRS or whatever in order to take advantage. They might actually be hampered in some way to take advantage of the, the same technology that a, a independent hotel can spin up in a couple of weeks, you know, yeah, yeah. Or, or a couple of days for that matter. Right, right. So, so yeah. I, I see it as a bright, uh, technology as a bright spot for, right. uh, for, for independence. Yeah, I agree. I um, agree. So in many ways, you'll kind of answered the next question, which was if you had a, a room full of hoteliers, um, for five minutes and yep. uh, you had their full attention, what would be some of the key messages that you'd want to convey to them? I think it depends who it is, but if it was, if it was your, your sort of independent hotel segment, I would just really encourage them to get the basics right. And, and I think I, I talked about this a bit before is so many of them don't have the basics right, which is really understand you, how your customer is shopping for your property to spend a bit of time thinking about it. Like who's coming to your hotel? Look at your data and go, who's actually, so you know, what channels do I really need? If, I, if I've got, if I see a lot of Chinese people pitching up to my hotel, like maybe I want to be on sea trip, you know? And um, so think really about where your guests are coming from, tap into those channels. Think about if people are, um, you know, if the shift in, in your market is, is a lot of mobile shopping, just really invest in that. Make just, you don't have to spend a lot of money these days. You can get a top class booking engine with mobile capability for not very much every month, but make the effort to actually invest in that stuff. And when you start thinking about how you manage your, your OTAs and your direct bookings, et cetera, just make sure you've got a, a you know, a cohesive um, sort of integrated policy around that and, 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 and be smart around doing that. So I think just getting, just getting your sort of basic, how do I engage with my customer online yeah. is still a challenge for a lot of people. And so I'd encourage them to get that right before you take the next step yeah. and start worrying about the things because that, that's going to be your 80 percent then yes you're going to get really like cool stuff out there that will get you the other 20 percent of your business but you just got you really you got to get that right and so yeah. i would just encourage them to do that and the ones that are more um you know more sophisticated have obviously got to, um you know start looking into the realms of their bigger hotels of things like revenue management and, and enhancing that but but yeah, I just I, I, we we still come across a lot of people that, that just need to get yeah. the basics right, yeah. and so yeah. and so. Very good, Mike Ford. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great nice to have you. Show. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks again for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell next to the subscribe button for your notifications. And until next time, it's bye from Sydney. Bye bye.